Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you, all of you. And may the Holy Spirit enlighten your understanding, the understanding of all of us, for us to know what is His good, pleasant, and perfect will of God for our lives. May the Holy Spirit enlighten your mind, my dear friend, for you to understand finally what He wants to do in your life with your cooperation, your cooperation, which means a covenant in a marriage between God and you. When there is such covenant in, in a marriage or a covenant or a partnership, uh, they need the consent of both parties, right? It needs that both will agree, both that are marrying are going to agree, those who are entering that partnership, isn't it true? So God wants to have a covenant with you. So if you want to have a covenant with Him, then He is ready to do so. Pay attention. We've been meditating in these past days on Isaiah chapter 65 when God says like this, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. And then I was thinking, and I always try to to know what God wants to say when He speaks in such a way. Because how was He sought for people who did not ask for Him? Usually, whoever is seeking for someone, they ask here and there, right? But He says, I was found by those who did not seek Me. How come? So how come a person who is not seeking for the Lord is, is found by Him and He finds that person? I was found by those who did not seek Me. They did not seek Me. I was sought by those who did not ask for Me. And I was thinking, meditating and so on. And I think, I believe, I believe that God, when He says, I was sought by those who did not ask for me, I was found by those who did not seek me, He is referring to the Gentiles, Gentiles that are not Jews, that were not Jews, that are not Jews. So, people who do not have knowledge of God, people who are not religious, people who are not in a church, in a denomination, a people that are, let's say, empty, but at the same time, they have within themselves a desire, a thirst, a will to know this God that is invisible, this God that is untouchable, this God who is a spirit. So this person has a desire to know Him, but they won't go to any church. Perhaps you are one of these people. You are watching me now. You are a person who is living for the sake of living, without direction, let's put it this way. You, you lost faith in everything, you've seen so many bad examples, perhaps inside the churches, you see so many bad examples of people who have believed in God, including 
have embraced the Bible and sung songs and worshipped God and danced and they have felt things inside of a specific church. But when the person leaves the church, you see that they are not that that they say they are. For example, you are the husband or a believer wife and you see your wife going to church or you see your husband going to church and you are a woman that by his testimony or her testimony, you can say, oh, I can't believe in God this way. How am I going to believe in God? My wife raises her hand that in the church prays, gives offering, speaks of Jesus to other people. My husband speaks of Jesus to other people, but at home, he is something horrible. He is evil. He mistreats me or she mistreats me and she doesn't take care of me and so on. Everything that she speaks there in the church or outside of the church there to other people doesn't match with what she says she believes or what she preaches doesn't go with what she lives in her relationship with me, for example. So you are a bit frustrated with her because you expect, of course, who, anybody would expect that, let's say, the owner, the life of the person who profess their faith in the living God is a life that is different. The person is supposed to have character and be honest and transparent and honorable and truthful. But it's not what you've seen in your wife or in your husband or your children or your parents who go to church. And God is saying exactly that here. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. Which means you, as, as a person who is frustrated in your faith, you don't see the God that the other person who lives with you speaks about and preaches about. And they advertise about this God out there. So you are completely alienated from this faith. So you are not seeking God. You don't seek Him. You are not looking for Him. However, God, God, He speaks in, in His words. A nation that was not called by my name to a nation that was not called by my name, I said, here I am. In other words, it's what I understand. It's my interpretation, a personal interpretation. I understand that you who see your relative in the church and so on and speaking about Jesus to other people but when this relative comes to your house and in your personal relationship with them you don't see God in them you don't smell the fragrance of Christ in them because the Bible says that we are the good fragrance of Jesus which means that if we as Christians are not the good fra fragrance of Christ, then obviously we are the other of this world. And we don't see that in, in the life of the person that you live with. And that person does not give a good testimony in their own life, in their daily lives and their personal conduct. However, on the other hand, inside of you, there is a sincere desire. You say, I won't go to this church because my wife speaks of Jesus, but she doesn't practice what she preaches. She preaches Jesus, but she doesn't live what she preaches. So she's a liar to me. So I, I don't want anything to do with that. So this type of people who don't go to any place, any church, any religion, 
they feel frustrated because they see someone who goes to a church, a certain religion, but they have a behavior that is even worse than before they went to church. But this person who is frustrated because of the bad testimony that others give and their relatives, they have a desire, they say to God, deep down in their soul, they say, if I could know the true God, if He exists, if He really existed, I, I wanted to know Him. So you have this thirst, you have this desire, this hunger. So God is speaking to you, to a nation, to a people, a person that was not called by my name, but they were sincere. Then he said, here I am. Here I am. In other words, God is there with you. You who want to see in your relative that goes to a certain church, God's testimony, God's example, this person doesn't go to church with you, but deep down they would like to see the God whom you speak about to them, right? You give testimony to other people, your, your relatives, your husband, your wife, they say, how I wanted to know this God, but I do not want to have this life, the life that she has, because she says this and that, that Jesus is this, and He is the truth, that Jesus is good, but I don't see that, she is lying. She says that she has the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of Truth, but she lies. So how can I believe in this God? However, this sincerity of yours, your transparency, my dear friend, is what draw God's attention, because He says, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me, which means you are not seeking God, but deep down in your soul, you wanted Him, you desired Him, you desired to know Him. It's for you that God is saying, here I am, here I am, twice, twice. He is insisting, He is insisting, twice, here I am, here I am. He is there with you now. He is with you now. The Spirit of God is there. It doesn't mean that He is inside of you, but He is near you. He is saying to you, here I am, I am there, I am here, I am here. Twice, which means, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Do you want to know me? Do you truly want to know me? Then here I am, to reveal myself to you. And what do I do? You may ask, what do I have to do? What you need to do is to get the Bible, the Word of God, read and meditate there in Isaiah chapter 65, chapter 65, which says that God was found by those who did not seek Him, a people who did not seek for Him, which is a people, let's say, isolated from the Israelites, that had knowledge of God and access to His Word, that had and has access to His Word, but they prefer to live in the traditions, the rituals, they live keeping the Sabbath, not eating pork, and not working on Saturday, not doing this and that, as many 
many of churches out there who make sacrifices, but the greatest sacrifice that God wants from each of us is obedience to His Word. But how is a person going to obey the Word of God if they don't know the Word? Therefore, my friend, for you, God is saying, Here I am, here I am, to hear your cry out, so that then we may make a covenant with one another, and your life may then have taste, and you may exude His fragrance, and you will manifest His glory in this world. That's what God wants you to do, all right? Tomorrow we are going to be back, continuing with the fast of Daniel, and I'd like to ask you who know somebody who suffers with depression, that you will take this person tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. in the Temple of Solomon or any universal church, because tomorrow, at 2.30 p.m. in all the universal churches of the Kingdom of God, we are going to be doing a special work for those who suffer with depression. So you please bring someone there, get your car and drive that person there, take this person with you, and God will do His marvelous work in this person's life. Alright? May God bless you all. And I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.